Hello there. Aristotle, education is considered a human right. Uh, I don't think we need to capitalize that. However, not everyone has access to it. I believe. Okay, so here's quite a big assumption. So I can say, um, most, I don't know, most lawyers, activists, and even politicians believe education is considered a human right. Or if you know more about this subject, perhaps you can say in the Geneva Connect. Convention on Human Rights, education is is considered a human right, something like that. However, everyone, not everyone has access to it. Good stuff. I believe that one of the barriers preventing people from studying is its cost. Okay. Is cost. That's the barrier. Okay. I believe that one of the barriers preventing people from studying is cost. Okay. That's the barrier. This is there because of different views about free education. So if it is feasible or not. Here, let's use the demonstrative the pronoun, it. This is quite clear, okay? If it, because we just mentioned it here, there's no other subject in between, so we can use it, and it just avoids repetition. When you look over the wage gap in many countries, most of the people with a higher paycheck have studied at the university. Beautiful, don't need capitalization. Consequently, an idea how to reduce the socioeconomic inequality rate could be through better access to higher education, in other words, free education. Well done! Besides helping individuals, free education can support a better economy because wealthy people spend more money boosting in the industry and the trade of goods and services. Excellent. Now, um, okay, so here, for example, when Nigeria, or when Canada, um, improved or made education courses or basic liter literacy education courses available for vast swaths of the poor population. X, Y, Z happened. You know, we can think, think of an example and it makes our argument irrefutable, it makes it strong. It's difficult to argue against because you can just say, hey, look, this happened in Nigeria, this happened in Botswana, or in Scotland, wherever. Okay? And then, what we could do is uh, finish with a the therefore sentence. And this is very close to the framework, the C2 template that we have on our course, which we're having great success with, with the students. And I think somebody like you, who's got good language skills, would probably um, excel. So, yeah, when you reply to this email, tell me, you know, what's your target score? Are you going to Canada? Do you want to go to the UK? Tell me your situation. Maybe we can help you more. From another perspective, some questions can be relevant for this discussion. The most important one, who's going to pay the bill? Be careful. I try to avoid, I always teach my students to avoid direct questions because only two reasons. One, you, you hardly ever see direct questions in academic papers. And two, it's, ri it, it, it's risky and there's usually, so therefore it's risky, sorry, that's number one. And two, um, there's a better way to, or uh, an easier way to get the same message across without having to take the risk of a direct question. Because a major amount of concern on the subject is free education. Okay, super. Uh, I guess, again, we'd have to probably develop this whole paragraph, but obviously a lot more. In conclusion, I believe that the advantage of free education exceeds its disadvantages. Hence, free education would be the concerns presented are reasonable. Okay, I think there's maybe some typo here. With a capitalization problem. Um, anyway, as I said, please tell me your situation, tell me your plans, and see if we can work together. All the best, Alice.